Well, good day, folks, and a warm welcome to you wherever you may be. My name's Adam Tipple, and I'm speaking to you again from Dolby Uniting Church here in the Western Downs. And as we begin our time of worshipping God together, I greet you in the name of God. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. And we're going to begin with a time of prayer. And this is a wonderful prayer called Vini Creator, which was written by a man called David Adam. So let us pray together. Come, Lord, come down. Come in. Come among us. Come as the wind to move us. Come as the light to prove us. Come as the night to rest us. Come as the storm to test us. Come as the sun to warm us. Come as the stillness to calm us. Come, Lord, come down. Come in, come among us. To God the Father who created the world. To God the Son who redeemed the world. To God the Holy Spirit who sustains the world. Be your praise and glory now and forever. Amen. Well, you might remember if you were with me last week that we shared a very simple song together from the Tarze community. And we're going to share another simple song from the same community, which has a very simple words. And the song is called Jesus, Remember Me When You Come Into Your Kingdom. And that's all the words that there are. And we're just going to sing this through a few times together and repeat those words. And as we repeat them, they become a prayer, our prayer to Jesus. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me when you Come into your kingdom. Amen. And we might remember that those were the words that a criminal said to Jesus with perhaps his last breath. And we might rejoice in the knowledge that, of course, Jesus granted him his request. Well, we're now going to have our main reading from Scripture. And we're reading a reading that's on our lectionary readings for today, the fifth Sunday of Lent. And the reading's from the Old Testament. And it's about a wonderful vision that God gives to Ezekiel for the people of Israel, the Valley of Dry Bones. And we're reading Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of dry bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophecy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, Suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. 
Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open up your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you. And you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, we're living in a, a bit of a strange time. And I think it's a time of exile. And we've been exiled into our own homes, haven't we? And as we're exiled, I think we might feel that we've been cut off. You know, we've been cut off from friends and family. We've been cut off from those places and those pleasures that we perhaps take for granted, that we do every single week or perhaps even every single day. And as Christians, I wonder, are we feeling cut off from church? Are we cut off from that Sunday gathering of coming together into church and sharing in a time of praise? Are we feeling that we're maybe cut off from our church friends and family? Are we perhaps feeling that we're even possibly cut off from God? You know, we have that powerful encounter on a Sunday morning. Are we feeling that we're, that we're cut off from that experience? Well, you know, it's really amazing to me because this reading speaks about a people who are in exile and a people who are feeling cut off. And these, of course, are the people of Israel. And if you know your biblical history, you'll know that the people of Israel went into exile in 586 BC. And the city of Jerusalem was destroyed and the temple was destroyed. And this was so significant because the temple was the place where heaven met earth and people went for an encounter with God. And the temple is no more. And so they feel desolate and they feel cut off. And I just want to read again what it says in verse 11 as God explains about the dry bones. Then he said to me, mortals, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. And you can hear that pain. And I believe that cutting off is that the people of Israel believe that they've been cut off from God because they're not at home in Israel. They can't go to the temple anymore, so they feel cut off from God and they've lost hope. So I think this speaks powerfully to us in this time. And it's a wonderful message of encouragement. And Ezekiel gives them this vision, and this vision of dry bones being restored to life. And throughout this vision, there's a word that comes up time and time again, a word which is a Hebrew word, ruach, ruach. And this word means breath and it means wind and it means spirit. And it's used in this different way throughout this reading. And it's a word of powerful encouragement because what this word signifies is the presence of God. And so the people of Israel think they're cut off from God's presence and God's saying, no, that's not right. I can be where I want to be. I am still present with you. And so we read of God's breath entering these bones, God's breath coming into the people of Israel. You know, the wind that God asks Ezekiel to pray to or prophesy to, that's that ruach as well. And so it's God's presence that brings the breath and the new life into the people. And then we read in verse 14, 
something incredibly powerful. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. And this spirit again is this word ruach and God's promising that he will put his spirit within the people and his spirit will lead them on into this amazing journey as they will come back into Jerusalem, into Israel. And there'll be this incredible renewal in their spiritual life. And it won't be dry bones anymore, but it will be a wonderful blossoming and renewal. But let's think about that Ruach. Let's think about God's spirit. And God says to the people of Israel, I'll put my spirit within you. And as Christians, friends, we can have a wonderful encouragement because God has put his spirit within us. And that's incredible good news because it means it doesn't matter if we can't come to church on a Sunday morning because we are the church. We are the temple of God's spirit, as Paul tells us so powerfully in 1 Corinthians. And that means we can never be cut off from God. And in this time, isn't that a powerful encouragement? While we may feel cut off, we are reminded that God is always with us because his spirit lives within us. What an incredible encouragement. And there's a little bit more because as Christians, our understanding is it's not the temple where heaven meets earth. But it's a person. And that person, of course, is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. This is where and who heaven meets earth. And so for us as Christians, we have the opportunity to turn to Jesus Christ in this time. To turn to him in prayer. To read about what he has to say to us in the words of scripture. To invite him into our hearts, into our homes, into our lives. And when we do this, and when we seek more from God and more from Jesus Christ, we begin to understand that that kingdom of heaven breaks into our lives wherever we are. Because there's no barriers between us and God. And we have the wonderful promise of Jesus Christ to his disciples. That I will be with you until the end of the age. So friends, be encouraged. We might be in a time of exile. We might be feeling cut off. But God is present with us through Ruach, through his spirit. God is near to us and in Jesus Christ we can experience that meeting of heaven and earth. So let us pray together and we're going to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, our time of worship is now a drawing to a close. And it's been a wonderful blessing for me to be able to share this time with you. I just want to quickly highlight some resources which are available on our website. If you go on to the online worship page, you'll find that there's a link there to some wonderful kids resources which are provided free of charge by Illustrated Ministry. And they're a real blessing to our church in this time. There's some beautiful illustrations and puzzles and lots of wonderful things which tie in with the lectionary readings each week. So I commend them to you. If you go to our main page, you can see that there's some information there about what our church is doing through this time um, while we're affected um, by coronavirus in our communities. And you'll be able to see that there are some online banking details there. So if you would like to give to our church and thank you to all those who've already done so, then you'll find the correct details there if you'd like to make online banking payments. 
Now, next Sunday is usually the Sunday at Dolby Uniting Church that we would share in communion together. And we're just waiting to get a um, word from the assembly about um, you know, this being an OK thing for us to do. So my hope is that when we gather online next week, we're actually going to be able to share in communion. So please bring some bread and some wine or grape juice if you have it. If you don't, then just bring some bread. I'm sure that that will still bless us. Um, and we'll hopefully be able to share in this wonderful blessing of communion, of being the body of Christ and sharing in the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus. And so next week, worship will be broken up into two segments. We'll have the usual 15 minute section of um, prayer, song, um, reading and, and message. And then we'll also have a section of communion. And so that's my, my hope for next week. Well, our time together has come to an end and we finish with a blessing. Sisters and brothers, remain in God's peace and be the people of God wherever you are. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Spirit be with you eternally. So go in peace and uh, yeah, can't wait to see you next week. God bless.